Well, we are almost live. We are live. Good evening, guys. It's Tuesday night. It's a little after seven o'clock. It is time for conversations with Commodores. And as you guys know, we have former players, coaches, trainers, cheerleaders, band, and fans, and students, and graduates, anybody who is impacted or had an impact on the Vanderbilt football program at any and all time. And I'm so very pleased to have my friend, Judge Carol Privet from Birmingham, who is not only a graduate of Vanderbilt, but maybe one of the most diehard black and gold fans you will ever meet. So for many reasons, that's why I've invited Judge to join me this evening. Judge, thank you for making some time this evening. I'm so looking forward to our conversation. Bernard, it's really great to be here. And uh, anytime I can talk about Vanderbilt, I'm happy. Well, let's, before we get into what's going on these days, because there really is so much great stuff going on, share a little bit of your origin story about how you ended up in Nashville in the, uh, for undergraduate during those years. Well, uh, spring of my junior year in high school, uh, did the usual tour of campuses. Second college I went to see, and I had excluded already Alabama, Auburn, and Alabama colleges. I wanted to get out of the state. So mm -hmm. the second campus I went to was Vanderbilt. I walked on a campus and turned to my mother and said, this is where I want to go. I fell in love with the campus immediately. And, I've ne and that's never gone away. So that's how I ended up there. Well, Judge, you, you were also on campus during such an important time mm -hmm. in US history, so much change for the good and for bad, we're undergoing in our society. And a lot of that spilled over into colleges and into to sports. Share, if you will, about when you got to campus, were you aware, maybe as a, as a high school student, was the bigger picture out there part of your daily knowledge? And, and were you observing that? And then when you got to college, did that change? Did you become either more aware, more involved, or more insulated being on the college campus? I came to Vanderbilt a fairly naive freshman. Mm -hmm. And I'd been a college, I'd been my high school newspaper editor, but that didn't get me much beyond the campus of Andalusia High School or downtown Andalusia. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, South Alabama comes to Nashville and it was, it was a, something of a culture shock. And I signed up for the Hustler mm -hmm. and best decision I ever made because that became my home away from home. I didn't get in a, I didn't get in a fraternity, a sorority, or whatever those things are. And um, Vanderbilt became my family at, 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 with the Hustler. And um, it really did expand everything about my knowledge of the world. The first impact my freshman year was, and this is in the spring of 1967, so it was an amazing time. It was run by a guy whose book is back there, Fry Gayard. And Fry has written a book about our time in the 60s that's focused really on the things at Vanderbilt. Um, and so it, it really um, brings it home. If anybody wants to know anything about Vanderbilt in the 60s, um, Fry's book is, is, is a great source. And it was um, eye-opening. I mean, I was aware, I mean, I'm originally from Birmingham, although I went to high school in South Alabama, I was vaguely aware of things going on, but if you lived over the mountain in the 50s and early 60s, you were really isolated from the social movement that was a part of Birmingham. Mm -hmm. But I became educated pretty quick, and I got to know people from all over the country and people of all kinds of different political uh, backgrounds and, and philosophies. And I got into some, I started out as a political science major. I knew I wanted to be a political science major. And the beauty of a Vanderbilt education in the late sixties was you were encouraged and, and absolutely had to think. That's not something that you generally get in a high school education, but a Vanderbilt education, you have to think. 
And it was wonderful. It was just, it was absolutely um, mind expanding. I was in the right place at the right time for me. Judge, talk a little bit about the, I don't know if they were daily or weekly get togethers with the Hustler staff and those conversations and the education that I guess you would say that would be the collateral education of being in that position. Although you weren't necessarily in a classroom, you were certainly learning and, and sharing. Well, absolutely. This happened really more after my freshman year. I was just a little bitty reporter my freshman year. Mm -hmm. uh, but my sophomore year, and particularly my junior year, um, when I became uh, the copy editor, and then my senior year, when, well, I guess, no, my junior year, I guess my sophomore year, I was copy editor. My junior year, I became managing editor, which I was my senior year as well. Um, and we talked about everything. Uh, one of my close friends, still close friends, um, Chuck Offenberger became the editor of the hustler my junior year. We went from a weekly to, well, we had gone from a weekly to a, a bi-weekly under Greg Tucker, I think. And then we became a, we, were, we became on an, an offset, uh, newspaper and with, and absolutely, and I, I have said this to his face, crazy guy who was our editor. And the first issue of the Vanderbilt Hustler, my, saw, my junior year, the Vanderbilt Hustler endorses Dick Gregory for president and spends all of its money and all of our budget to bring Dick Gregory to speak on campus. It was, it was a wild time. It was wow. a fun time. It was a challenging time. And it was, I mean, we, Two nights a week, it's a good, I don't know how I graduated from Vanderbilt because two nights a week I was at the Hustler until one and two o'clock in the morning uh, putting together that newspaper or going to Murfreesboro, um, driving down to Murfreesboro to the printers to put the paper to, put the paper to, to you know, strip, we, it stripped it in, that's what we called it, and, mm -hmm. and put it together, taking last minute um, sports stories from Henry Hecht, uh, you know, it was, it was a wild time. And, um, you know, Henry was calling in stories from all over the Southeast on particularly, I remember basketball stories and, uh, you know, things that were happening, um, to, you know, within the community, we had the, um, all kinds of, of just in wonderful things happening, including what became a counter culture conservative newspaper, which is Versus, which turned into something else later on. But at the time, it was sort of trying to counter what was going on with Hustler because Vanderbilt is not noted for being a hotbed of radical liberalism, but the Hustler kind of was. And so it, it, there, had, there had to be a counterculture, but in typical Vanderbilt style, it was conservative. Um, so anyway, we, it was, a, it was a, an exciting place to be. The classrooms were um, interesting always. Some of the professors were uh, were, were just um, wonderful. I had a I had a, an interest. I still have an interest. I've always had an interest in um, in Israel and in the creation of Israel and and in Arab and Israeli relations. And one of my favorite professors was a Palestinian refugee, uh, Samir Anabtawi, Dr. Samir Anabtawi, and Dr. Anabtawi was like, you know, Miss Privet, are you sure you want to write and look into this? I mean, you know, that's my country. That's my, and I said, yes, sir, I really do. So naively, I went on and wrote about the Arab-Israeli war. And he was like, okay, you want to be a historian or you want to be a political scientist? But at any rate, it was, you know, it was a wonderful, wonderful education. I probably had as many hours in 100 level history courses, taking every survey of history course that Vanderbilt then offered, um, that they made me go back and take some other courses so I could have a history minor. I mean, it was, I, I wanted to know a little bit about everything. And I got that. Well, it's, it's the late 60s in America were such, as we mentioned, they were radical times. It was great change in society. And on Vanderbilt's campus and more specifically in the, the world of sports of which I know you're such a fan, Vanderbilt also integrated most of its sports programs and most notably 
with Perry Wallace on the basketball team, later with Taylor Stokes and a few others on the football team. And I know that you were friendly with, with Perry back then. Yeah. Share a little bit about, I guess, your fandom of sports and how, and how the black and gold really got on your radar. And then I do want to talk a little bit about your friendship with, with Perry Wallace. Well, my, you know, I came to Vanderbilt the year after Clyde Lee. So mm -hmm. it was the year after Clyde Lee and, and the wonderful, incredible experience of Vanderbilt basketball, but it was still a wonderful time for Vanderbilt basketball. Um, and there have been other great times, for Vanderbilt basketball. And I've got, I have some friends who are, who were a part of that. Um, Vanderbilt football at the time probably wasn't that exciting, although there were some, some fabulous, fabulous people involved. And, and I have to, um, I have to mention one in particular tonight because he, he just passed away and that's Bob Bundy, um, who, who was played, uh, it was in the class of 69 and, uh, he, he passed away after a long fight with ALS and was a part of my, my, my favorite pastime, which is my email, my Vanderbilt email group. And, and Bob was, a, was a part of, of that. That's about, I don't know, it keeps growing. It's over 50 now. I don't know how many people are in it, but it, it's, it's an amazing group of people, but that's another story. But, um, I kind of was, uh, you had to, back then you had to have a date to go to the football games and I didn't have many dates at that point. So I, but I had some friends. I was not even at the most important game of my whole in college career, which my, my senior year when Vanderbilt beat Alabama. Now I was listening and I went after out afterwards and celebrated. And we will not talk about that celebration because it needs to be uh, kept in, in a deep, dark corner, but we had a wonderful, <laughs> but you know, I, I was listening and it was, uh, I was I was walking on air. I mean, I I was just walking on air from that. It was a, a wonderful win, and I'm you know I'll never forget that. But I guess the most um, most important sports events took place on the baseball field or right around the baseball field. Vanderbilt students didn't go to baseball games back then. Mm -hmm. um, the the Chuck decided that our coach needed a nickname and so she he nicknamed uh our, our coach Smokey so we Smokey Smithu who later became much more notable in Nashville under his real name but you know he he was he was uh a, a really uh a great guy but if there were six people in the stands other than than family members of, of players that was an amazing thing there was this and, the, and of course we didn't have anything like the Hawk uh, is now. And there was a, the outfield after behind the, the chain link fence of the outfield, there was a berm of mm -hmm. dirt and well, actually of grass. And that was the best place to watch the game from because hopefully you could hide the six pack, which was illegal at that point. And I had, I, I was not present when some important Vanderbilt student government leaders and so forth were caught with their six pack there. I happen to not have been at that game, but <laughs> I admit at this point, I was just as guilty on other occasions. And sure. so, you know, that started my love of Vanderbilt baseball. And then along came Tim Corbin. And, you know, yeah, that we'll, was history. We're, we're gonna get to the modern in, in a few minutes. And I, and I did a little research. I, I understand under Tennessee law, the statute of limitations has long passed on any act you <laughs> might have committed or might not have committed as an undergraduate. So you're all for that. And good. I'm not run, and I don't have to run for re-election anymore either since That's I'm right. retired. That's right. As a retired judge in, in Birmingham, you're now enjoying the, the fruits of all of your years as an attorney and as a, as a judge. And we are going to get to the modern times in a minute, but I want to talk about, I want to go back and talk about Perry Wallace and what he meant then and really what he means now and forever to the Vanderbilt community and to the larger community as, as well. Unfortunately, I, I never had the pleasure of meeting him, but I've spoken with so many who knew him later in life and knew him during his years at school and said he was one of the finest individuals, one of the most considerate 
people, regardless of the fact that he was accomplished as an athlete, he had so many more aspects of his life that really stood out as well. It was almost you put a comma after athlete and then there's many more superlatives. That's so, absolutely, yeah, that's true, yeah. I, I, I went to Vanderbilt basketball games my freshman year, not to watch the varsity, but to watch the freshmen because freshmen and varsity didn't play together at the same time. And to see Perry Wallace and, and, and Gregory Dillard, but particularly to watch Perry dunk. Mm -hmm. And the, the SC, I don't know if it was the SEC or the NCAA outlawed the dunk after they saw Perry dunk, dunking shots because they figured he could beat everybody. And they didn't, re they didn't, uh, they didn't, they uh, didn't, delete the no dunk rule until after Perry had graduated. He was a consummate gentleman. I did, I, I got to know him, I guess, really more my junior and senior year. Um, we never had a class together, but, and I'm not sure how we got to know each other. I don't recall. He, he and his friend, uh, Walter Murray, for whom there's a, a building named on the, I think it's on the Peabody campus, but Walter and Perry were really, really close friends. And I got to to know both of them some, not a, I won't, not a whole lot, but um, I did, I guess it was, I guess it was our senior year. There was uh, the African-American student, student organization had a house that they had kind of like, like a fraternity house. There were, and many of them had gone to fraternity parties over at Fisk, but they finally got their own place on the Vanderbilt campus my senior year. Um, it's now where a parking deck is, but, um, Perry invited me to go with him to one of their dances, one of their Saturday night dances. So I went mm -hmm. and, you know, I, it was, uh, I, I think I have the distinction because, uh, I, Perry was notorious for not dancing and I've danced with Perry Wallace. So I, that's a, <laughs> that, that I have that that distinction. He, he was such a gentleman and such a gentle man mm -hmm. and totally brilliant. Um, when in later years after Vanderbilt, he of course played a little ball, a little, little professional ball and then went to law school mm -hmm. and became an attorney with the Department of Justice. Well, I was an assistant U.S. attorney, which meant I got to go to Washington some, and I happened to just run into him in the halls of the Department of Justice. And I'm going, I mean, it's like Perry, Carol, you know, it's great. Well, after that, whenever I got up there, I tried to see him. I couldn't always, but we'd run into each other. And we sort of kept up with each other when he left the department and, and, and went into teaching. Um, and we and he kind of kept up with what I was doing. And I kind of kept up with what he was doing without keeping up with each other. We just kind of knew and we'd run into each other at, at events. And, um, you know, we, we would see each other. And the last time I saw him, they were filming his uh, filming of, 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 of the, I guess the video or story based on, on, on um, Andrew Marinus's book, Strong Inside, but he was, he was on, he was on the court at, in Memorial and they were, he was being interviewed, he'd been interviewed by I think for a group of students and um, went in, first time I walked on the court in Memorial, they didn't used to let us do that right. and went up to him and just got, the biggest hug and it was you know it was wonderful great a great great person you know andrew's book was phenomenal yeah the the fact that the university it was long overdue oh yes absolutely recognition many years after the fact but i'm glad that they did but in my opinion when they write and it's a continual thing when they write the history of vanderbilt's campus when they write the history of the Vanderbilt of Vanderbilt University, he cannot be left out of the story. Absolutely, absolutely. And his, whether it was by action or by words or a little bit of both, there are just those individuals that are who are rare that come across your lifespan. And I know you're you're so thankful to have had that friendship oh, yeah. for all of those years. But he's one of those individuals that if you would have, if I were to be asked, he would be on my short list. And not just from a Vanderbilt standpoint, no. I mean, just from a encompassing all of society standpoint, he would be there. 
So I know well, that, that he, 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 de- he deserves to be there. I mean, that's, he was, he was an amazing human being. Judge, sticking with the, the time period you're undergraduate at, at, at Vanderbilt, those years, you know, I've always heard the, the days are long, the years are fast. So the day-to-day grind never is easy. But then all of a sudden, after about, what, 1,300 days, if you're a four-year, they're over. And you're walking across the stage, and you're done, and you've graduated. My question, I know that, that with your time at The Hustler, you have to be more in tune with what's going on around the campus just because of, that's the environment that you're in. And, and as a result, larger society. So I guess my, my question is during that time period, reflecting back during that time period, could you imagine have been at Vanderbilt more during a more turbulent time from a society or not turbulent, maybe that's not the right word, change in society. And I don't mean the pandemic, I mean fundamental change in, in, in the way society should treat itself. I think that was, it was pivotal. There's no question. Um, and it was, uh, it, it, it was different in looking back from the experience of students on more, shall we say, engaged campuses, the ones who, who were uh, really, um, you know, burning buildings and doing all kinds of other stuff. Vanderbilt was relatively safe in that protests at Vanderbilt were very, um, I don't know, uh, Southern, very, very uh, gentlemanly. You know, Vanderbilt at that time was a, was a very, uh, had a very Southern gentlemanly atmosphere. And so protest was, was done in that manner, but it was still protest. And we were, we, there were still marches against the war. I marched with a little candle down mm-hmm. West End, um, to, to march against the war, there were protests uh, against um, there were protests against anything, including for me the most important protest, which was against uh, treating women differently from men. We had they had what they were called parietal hours or in loco parentis, where women had to be in, particularly freshman women had to, had dorm hours. Men didn't. We were treated differently in a lot of different ways. And we protested about that and we got it changed. So for me, that was, uh, you know, that was something that I found that it was very important for me to uh, be treated equally. We also, women couldn't wear pants when I first started on campus. We had to wear skirts. And if you were leaving Branscombe dorm to go on a date with a guy who had only a motorcycle so you had to wear slacks. You had, and it was a beautiful sunny day. You had to wear a raincoat. Now, if that isn't the stupidest thing I ever heard of in my life, but that's the way it was my freshman year. <laughs> well, Judge, I, I know that the Kent State tragedy occurred in oh, May yeah. of seventy. Right. Was that the Was that the same week or month when you graduated as an undergrad? It was the same month. It was a few weeks beforehand, and as a result, um, many exams were canceled. Um, That's what I was going to ask you. Was there an effect or an impact? There was an effect. Not everything was canceled. Um, Mm -hmm. There were still, it was, but it was very subdued. Mm -hmm. Um, Unlike uh, at at, um, other campuses where, you know, not all, much more, much more impact at other schools. Um, But there was, um, there, there were, there were, there were, protests and sympathy um, gatherings for the Kent State students. And we were all horrified. I mean, to have that happen to a college student, because we always felt safe on on the Vanderbilt campus. I was going to say it's a campus like that is almost, I don't know if bubble is the right mentality, but it almost can act that way. But Judge, you graduate and you go up north to New York for, for law school. Did you did it have an impact on you to be able to say you were a Vanderbilt graduate when you were up north in law school, or maybe even after when you started into private practice and then uh, your your public practice? What would what did that mean to to say that you were a Vanderbilt graduate as opposed to 
you know, all the other state schools or wherever you were at the time when those topics came up? Well, when I was at NYU in law school, having a Southern accent was a detriment. You had to get rid of your Southern accent. Wow. Um, they're, they're just as, pre- I learned, learned that prejudice was uh, just as strong in the North, just on different subjects. So um, I didn't, you know, I, 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 I miss Nashville. John, I watched Johnny Cash on television to keep in touch with, with, with Nashville. But um, I was in a class at NYU with people from, you know, all kinds of schools. I had a roommate from Vassar and another roommate from Michigan who actually, I think, took over a building or something. Anyway, it was, it was, it, being at NYU was a culture shock because I thought I was a very liberal sort of activist kind of person. And I found out compared to some of my classmates, I was pretty laid back and they were a lot more into things than I was and, and were involved in things that I would not have ever think I'd ever been involved in. So it was, we were, um, I was probably a lot quieter in law school than I had been because I was just in shock about some things and you learning. Weren't, you weren't in that bubble anymore. Being in New no, York in the fall, was living in, Saturday, yeah. that was really one of the hotbeds in the country of change. I was living in the middle of Greenwich Village, wow. which uh, was at that time full of, of people on drugs in, in the park and uh you know, I actually did get with a group and sing folk sing songs in Washington Square Park a couple of times. But, um, you know, it was it was a, it was so different. My my roommate and I were afraid to ride the subways the first six months. So we were we figured out the bus schedule. So, oh, no. you know, it was it was it was a, it was a great culture shock for me. But I wouldn't give anything for it. I learned so much and it took me so far out of my comfort zone. And I still have some good friends from NYU. Um, but when I came home, to, but, it, but I'd like to back up, I also decided while I was at NYU that I really did want to come back south and I did want to be a civil rights lawyer. I had gone to NYU thinking I might want to do that. But three years in New York, well, really before that, but after about a year and a half in New York, I knew that's what I wanted to do. So um, that was the impact that it had on me. And um some of that's attributable to the closeness and the things I had experienced while at Vanderbilt. I was, so I I was came just home. getting ready to say, did any of what you observed or participated in in Nashville kind of feed into the maybe a little bit bigger picture uh, in law school? Maybe well, really yeah, I, I, I realized when I was in law school that prejudice and discrimination happen everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it became important for me. I had grown up and had been heard and heard about, you know, outside agitators coming in south and that being uh, casting aspersions on what was going on in the movement. Well, I kind of I, I met some people who were in the who had been in the movement, mm-hmm. and I decided I can. I, I wanted to to be an inside agitator. I wanted to come home, mm-hmm. and and be a part of change at home. Not a, not a big part, not a leader, right. but, but a part of it and to participate in it and to have an impact on change at home because discrimination happens everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I felt that coming home to, to work with, on that would be, have, have a greater impact and was what I was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And I was also, um, Involved, began to be involved in the women's movement as well. So it was those things that making a change at home seemed to me to be what I was called to do. And for those of you watching us live or maybe catch us on the, the replay or YouTube, I'm talking with retired Judge Carol Privet. Judge is a Vanderbilt undergraduate, uh, proudly bleeds the black and gold. She was on the Hustler staff as one of its editors during her undergraduate years, then law school up north. But now we're going to talk about being a sports fan, and particularly for the Commodores. And we've talked a little bit about baseball, football, basketball during her undergraduate. But guys, you don't know a fan until you sit next to the judge at one of the Vandy Boys baseball games. Yeah, I've already, I've, already, I've already been to, to, to uh, three of them. <laughs> 
Judge, what gives you joy pulling for the black and gold on any sports games, uh, competitions, anything that you attend or watch on TV or listen on the radio? There are a couple of things. First of all, it's just fun. And I, you know, I'm a, I, I, you're right. I believe black and gold and I love Vanderbilt. And I know in my, I know what these athletes are made of because they're not just athletes who are trying to move through and, 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 and get to the pros. They're not, they're, that they're in it in many ways for the love of the sport. They are some will go professional, but they're also students. And at Vanderbilt, an athlete has to be a student. And that they're at Vanderbilt, they could have, particularly the baseball players, could have gone anywhere. Yeah. They chose to go to Vanderbilt because they wanted the Vanderbilt education, which is of such importance. And you, you know, you, you, not many athletes in college make it to the pros. You know, it's such a small, small segment. Yeah. But so you can't take, not many are able to take that athletic acumen on into a business life. Mm -hmm. But the Vanderbilt education stays with you always. So I know that these athletes have it, that they are people that I could carry on a conversation with. The ones I've gotten to know I can and ones I haven't. They are dedicated to their sport, but they're also dedicated to getting an education. Mm -hmm. And the ones I've met, are just nice, good folks, and they're fun to know. And they're there. I know they're on my. I mentioned my email group. There are athletes from the '60s and '70s and so forth that are on. They're in this group, and they have become great successes in all kinds of fields, uh, and, and are just wonderful people. So uh, more power, more power to you, Mr. Football. Well, thank you. But Judge, you know you're so right. It's it's the mentality, regardless of your sport regardless of the decade or the years that you were there. One thing that to me is a, a commonality over all of that is it's not just about the four or five years you're on campus. It's the next 40 or 50 years. Yeah. And if you use those four or five years right, correctly, and do the right things, keep your head focused, it's going to set you up for the rest of your life. And that's one of the things I think that sets our school apart from so many other schools that may tout that, but I don't know if they can really back that up. Now, I know in the past many years with, this is Coach Corbin's 20th baseball season. You and I have been to games together. We sat at the Hoover Met and watched them, especially that 2019 comeback win the to win the SEC, that nine runs deficit against Ole Miss. Who can ever forget that? Oh, well, neither one of us believed it was going to happen. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. We, were, we were crazy by at the end of the game. 100 degrees, it didn't matter. We were, uh -oh. we were there. But, Judge, I guess I want to ask a little bit of maybe some of your favorite memories or players mm -hmm. or events or venues, because I know you have a group of friends you, you go – to visit with in Nashville and you go to the games, but you don't just go to Nashville. I know you travel somewhat to see the games as well. So yeah, well, I, I, I've been to Omaha twice with Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. I went the first time in 2014. Mm -hmm. I had watched, I guess the couple of years before, whenever I'm not sure exactly when, when they were there before and there was a big storm coming in. I knew a couple of my friends were there and I'd called them and said, get out of, of the stadium because the tornado's going to hit you. But anyway, so 2014, I was on, I was still on the bench and I said, I am going, I'm going. If Vanderbilt goes to Omaha, I'm going. Well, so I went the first weekend and I wasn't sure we were going to make it beyond the first weekend. Right, right. And I couldn't afford to stay for the rest of the, the time because I had to get back to work yeah. so I was watching the rest of it on television but it was it was phenomenal and you know that I had the year that was their first that was title. the first that year. was the the if I remember correctly that's the first of the two years against Virginia back to back year. and that's the John Norwood home run year and they're at, and yeah fabulous it was also Walker Bueller played that year um I had met Walker's mother at the SEC tournament 
and Walker had had gotten pulled. He hadn't pitched a really good game that night. And then, of course, he 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 went on to glory. Um, yeah. and, and and as you know, I, I root for the Dodgers because of Walk, Walker. Uh, but not only the Dodgers, but that's another story. But there was also Dansby Swanson mm-hmm. and and you know Carson Fulmer and and all kinds of um, Tony Kemp. Oh, Lord, to- love Tony Kemp. That's the and, Team Player of the Year in 2013. And he was he was a, such a fabulous, he was a fabulous person. My, some of my friends uh, still talk about how great he was with the kids mm-hmm. who who came to see him. Um, but it was uh, the atmosphere in um, the atmosphere in Omaha, plus being there with with friends from from co- old college friends who we met up there was just, just insanely wonderful. So the next year I had retired from the bench. So by golly, Vanderbilt was going and I was going back. And this time I stayed the whole time. Wow. To the very end when we lost in the third game of the finals, which to Virginia, which was not happy. But again, that third baseman, I'll never remember his name, but I am still not. Uh, happy with if you remember he was very aggressive and he did he bumped uh, I forget who it was but anyway that's baseball <laughs> yeah well yeah but anyway that was also you know that was that was um that was the year that that I because we were in town for so long we kept running into the guys and their families and restaurants and, and on the streets of Omaha and you know, you found out what an incredible gentleman Dansby Swanson is and what a great family he has. Mm-hmm. And those kinds of, which now, of course, why I'm a Braves fan is because of Dansby. Okay, we will we'll get in that. I follow Vanderbilt players in the pros. I don't follow right. professional teams. But you're rooting for about half of the major leagues right now. <laughs> which is kind of fun. You know, it really is kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to get to know them and to meet their families and to know, and then to go watch them and to sit, you know, and see them, their, see their parents going about as crazy as you are. You know, that's, there's, there's, there's just a really fun, wonderful experience. The only problem is it's long. You, I, you Omaha is a, it's a lovely place and the people are very, very nice. And there's, there is a lot to do there, but the entire time of the, College War Series is a little bit of a long stretch. So I'm not sure if they go. I didn't go back last in 2019. Um, but um, I may try. If they make it this year again, I'm, I won't go the whole time, but I may try to make it for a weekend. Well, it's, it's you know, it's, I hate to equate this, but it's becoming, it's like Alabama always competing in football for the title with Vanderbilt having gone to, Omaha so many years in the last 10 decade it's 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 it, and with them playing in the toughest conference in the country oh absolutely by far yeah you look at the standings any given week half of the top 10 is from the conference right but what coach Corbin does to mold the boys into men not just on the field but off the field when he trains them and teaches them why They should stand a certain way for the anthem. Why they should act a certain way in public. You can always tell a former Vanderbilt baseball player at major league games by the way they stand for the anthem. Yeah, yeah, and you know, if you go to a Vanderbilt football, a Vanderbilt baseball game, Mm -hmm. and you look at the guys lined up for the national anthem, and you look at the Vanderbilt guys, and you look at the other guys, you can tell a difference. Oh yeah, And, and it doesn't matter who they're playing. Um, when they get out and do their, what they now do is gymnastics or exercises, right. when they, you know, in terms of in between oh, innings craziness. Yeah. Well, that's they annoying. used back in the, but, but until the, they got called on it and were made to stop, they used to do some of the most fun things in the outfield while between right. innings that, I mean, they, they, they went bowling, they yeah. played, you know, they, they played all kinds of fun games and it just added a lot to the spirit of the game. I'm, I'm sorry. They, they can't do that much <laughs> clowning right. around anymore but um it's still they, good to see them and they just got back from hawaii four game sweep out there they've won nine in a row they're they're starting to hit their stride a little bit 
But as a side note, I want to challenge you, Judge, and I want to challenge anybody who watches the show. As you guys know, if you're part of our group, I'm organizing a continuing legal education seminar the Friday, August 26th, the day before Vanderbilt kicks off at Hawaii, August 27th, to start the season. I have, no, five confirmed speakers so far <laughs> for the seminar. Need two more. So anybody who wants to attend, I'm trying to get credit in Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia. There'll be no charge to attend. If you want to attend or if you want to speak, just send me a message and we'll make that happen. But the plans are coming together for a great CLE on the Friday. We've got Kenny Cole, former football player who's up in Huntsville now. Uh, George White, who's a former cheerleader, lives out in California, and some other folks who uh, are not part of the football program, but are definitely Vanderbilt people are going to speak. So, Judge, I throw that to you as a challenge if you want to join us or for anybody else. And the other thing, while I'm thinking of it, Judge, and I'm sorry for this, this uh, little side interlude, if you will, Vanderbilt, the Vandy boys take on, and this is not just a baseball show. We're going to get back to football in a second before we conclude. Vanderbilt takes on Tennessee April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And if you guys know, Tennessee's got a very good program now. I don't know how long it'll last, but for now they do. They've got a kid who throws 103. They're in the top 15. But it's going to be an important series at the Hulk. I'm organizing it. whoever wants to go. I'm getting some tickets through the ticket office. They won't be free, but they won't be $150 like they are on eBay, excuse me, on Ticketmaster and the other third-party sites. So again, drop me a message. I'm going Friday night and Saturday night, and we're going to go up to Clarksville to Coach Shepard's uh, Edwards Steakhouse for an early dinner, some camaraderie and hanging out there. And then there's also a game on Sunday, which I'm not going to, but I'm trying to get some tickets for those who want to. So again, just drop me a message, anybody who's interested in, in that. Thank you, Judge, for those two little commercials right there. <laughs> but I want to, as, as we're getting closer toward the end of our conversation, I want to talk about when you see other Vanderbilt graduates, whether it's in the legal fields, which I know there's many of us here in, in yes. Birmingham, sports or not sports. We've got Anthony Joseph, John Civil, there's many, many of them. Um, or you run across Vanderbilt grads of any generation just in your everyday life. What does that mean to you when you run into these folks and you, you find that bond, that connection? Because we're not all from Alabama or Auburn or UAB. We're not that close, three hours away, but still there's a, there's a bond there. And there's an immediate connection. I mean, I, you know, you, 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 if you somehow establish it, um, you know, in, in the airport going to Omaha with a Vanderbilt logo on and you run into people you've never met before, you get on the airplane and you're best friends um, and you see each other in the stands. I, I got to know, uh, you know, I've gotten to know so many um, acquaintances that way and had good experiences. It's uh, you, you. There's my my goddaughter is a Van, is a Vanderbilt Med School graduate and is neuroscience neurosurgery professor at Vanderbilt. Wow. She's amazing. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you, there's some so so many incredible people, fun people, um, intelligent, committed, and and just uh, good to know. And if you you, you if you make that connection. Then you can have a conversation. You talk about, well, was so-and-so going on there and what'd you do and what, you know, and it's just an immediate connection that you yeah. can make regardless of whether they are graduates of after of, of the 2000s or graduates of the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I mean, you know, it's it's there. It's a connection. And <laughs> uh, for that matter, my great uncle was a Vanderbilt grad. Well, it's because I mean, we, we all had greasy burgers or beers at Rotiers. Oh, yeah. we, you the know, late we, great rotiers. I will drove by it so sad. It's I not know. there. We we all at one point may have lived in Lupton at, at or excuse me at Branscombe in the quadrangle. We it's all here. had classes in this building or that. And that's what's so fun yeah. about those connections, regardless of what what year you were there, but yeah. years you were there. But judge, thank you for, for sharing a little bit of your journey tonight. It was so much fun. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it, Bernard. It, it it means a lot to me. And as I said, we have, 
I, I'm a part of this of an email group that's primarily the classes of 68, 69, 70, and then athletes and administration people and people like Anthony, like like Andrew Marinus and his and, right. and, and just various and sundry people who have a connection and a love for Vanderbilt. And we talk, we 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 email back and forth during, after, and, and it's you know about games because it's primarily about sports. Um one other thing I want to mention is the the project on unity and diversity yeah, that yeah. that John Meacham is 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 uh, one of the co-chairs of. I've been I've listened to several of his lectures. I'm a huge fan of his. I think it's a wonderful thing that the university is doing the in 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 presenting that to the community to the world because it's you know because of, of COVID it went uh, it, it went on on Zoom and and. It's doing a wonderful, wonderful thing and bringing Vanderbilt to more people. And just so you know, I got tickets to the Sanford event. Uh, later. Me too. Me too. I'll see you there. Hope to see you there. Yeah. Guys, this is, this is why I do these conversations each week. It's telling the oral history of our football program. And as a bigger picture, it sheds a little bit of glimpse of each guest's experiences on the campus, away from sports, maybe just in their everyday lives, but it just is a fun conversation we have every week. Every one of them is unique, fun to discuss. And Judge, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for bleeding the black and gold all these years. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you later in the month and at the Hoover Met in about two months. I will be there, I will be there. I, anchor down and go doors. Couldn't said it any better. You guys have a good night. We'll see you next week. Take care.